Tracy McFarlane for speaking with us today about health psychology and stress in the workplace. Okay. So what is health psychology and why would it be important for HR practitioners and students of organizational behavior to know anything about health psychology? Right. Thanks for inviting me and um, I know I wouldn't be overly biased if I say that health psychology is important for everybody. Certainly in the organization, um, health psychology, if you think about its very loose definition, is the application of psychology to understanding how our thoughts, feelings and behavior are related to our physical health. So in health psychology we talk about how those elements of ourselves, what, how we think, how we feel, how we behave, how it contributes to whether or not we get sick or stay healthy. And if we do get sick, how we can use information in, about our psychology to understand how we respond to sickness and also to use that information to contribute to the path back to wellness. So if you think of persons within an organization um, embodying the thoughts and cognitions or, or um, the thoughts or cognitions and the feelings or emotions and the behaviors, the activities that constitute health, then you see where it's important from an organizational perspective to understand and to use the insights gained from health psychology. All right, I noticed in your definition that mm -hmm. you mentioned physical health. Right. I'm wondering if you were deliberately omitting mental health, emotional health, or you know, is that not part of the No, you're I right, you're right. No, no, um, actually health has a wide range which encompasses physical and psychological well-being. Yes. Um, but in defining uh, the importance to the organization, I was saying that health psychology focuses on how our psychology contributes to our physical health. So it's the interplay between the psychological and the phys phys physical aspects of health. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I wanted to separate out stress because yeah. I, I think that that might be one of the most chronic conditions. Of course, there are other chronic conditions that I want to ask you about later. Okay. But um, how do you recognize stress in the workplace? And then what are the causes and the symptoms of work-related stress? Right, that's a big one. So stress, we think of stress in a, in a a very simple way but yet it is um, a very major concept and insidious it's part of a lot of aspects of life so if you think of stress as a person perceiving that they don't have what it takes to deal with a situation so usually we say that stress results when we perceive a gap between the demands of a situation and our ability to cope so, of course, in the organization, stress is important because we, we, we do business by creating challenges, placing the right persons in, you know, on task to meet challenges, to be productive, um, to work creatively together. So, it, to do that well, we need to be challenged as human beings. And then, also, sometimes the workplace and um, life at work does not go smoothly. So when we experience some type of harm, potential harm, a threat or a loss, that can constitute a stressful situation for the employee. So, um, so, so it's very important to think of stress in the workplace. From the very mild levels of stress, which would just increase our productivity and get us a little more alert and responsive, which is why, as human beings, we're designed to experience stress. So it's really a good thing, but it's just that the nature of daily life is that we are constantly being exposed to demanding situations and we don't often have the right tools for dealing with them um, psychologically as well as socially and materially we don't always have the available resources to meet the demands of, of modern life mm -hmm. and so that represents stress a stressful situation and human beings have a stress response which if it's activated too often and for too long it can be damaging to our health Okay. Mm -hmm. So what symptoms am I looking for? Right. So the, the very basic uh, manifestations of stress 
um, are on the psychological as well as the behavioral dimensions. So people vary, right? So some of the, 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 the common psychological responses to stress would be um, having a headache, inability to think clearly. Sometimes we see some behavioral disruptions, which again, they vary. So some people eat more, some people eat less. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are sleep disruptions. So some people will sleep a lot when they're stressed and some people just can't go to sleep. So those are examples of some of the psychological and behavioral manifestations okay, of stress. Of course, I imagine the temper tantrums in the office. Yes, behaviorally, we can find people in a, um, unable to get along they're yes. less cooperative short-tempered you know that type of thing and so you imagine many people feeling stressed over too long that can be a real barrier to a productive and happy workplace okay yes um, and what would the effect of that be on the workplace? You started to talk mm -hmm. about that, but you know yes. anything about what the cost is? Huh? Well, yes, I mean, the, the costs are actually direct and indirect, right? So in a good workplace, you have um, provisions for health care. And so say, for example, things like a headache, um, stress can also manifest in the stomach, in the body. So persons, also, right, kind of exactly, yes. digestive problems and also neck and shoulder pain. Sometimes a lot of people have neck and shoulder and back pain that goes undiagnosed for a long time and so they keep going to the doctor. So you have those direct costs for healthcare for the various maladies. And then you have the indirect costs where persons are just not as productive in the workplace. Okay. Absenteeism, um, low motivation, you know, so again, if we don't have the right coping strategies, then persons will respond, especially to the workplace specific stressors, mm -hmm. in a way that has a negative effect on our bottom line or our productivity in the workplace. All right, and what I was reading is that some of the common stress-related illnesses, mm -hmm. I mean, they're as bad as heart and cardiovascular problems and cancer. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Any of the lifestyle um, illnesses or the illnesses that are related to lifestyle factors can really be traced to, to stress as a risk factor. I mean, if you even think of obesity, we say that, you know, a person's body size can't possibly have anything to do with stress. Mm -hmm. But if we think of overeating eating, eating, yeah. or if we think of comfort eating mm -hmm. and those are usually the high fat high salt high sugar items yes. so 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 you see how there can be this indirect relationship to a stressful lifestyle and our physical health and the the, the disease costs okay. so 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 that is how epidemiology comes into it where epidemiology study who gets sick where and why so the epidemiology of stress related illnesses does identify that um, workplace stressors are associated with a lot of these chronic illnesses that you mentioned okay and yes. I'm just thinking you haven't mentioned the D word the depression right. anxiety those kinds of things yes, that, you yes. Know. you're right you're right those are on the psychological dimension yes. and also no, but I mean, I think it's like so, no, common, so common, and I think yes. that a lot of people don't take them. It's not that they don't take them seriously, but yes. you're almost um, stigmatized if you were to tell people that you're depressed at work. Right. You begin to yes, look bad right. at the office. You yes, know? yes, and I mean, you're a less desirable employee. Exactly. It's almost for some persons, you come to work and it's as if you have to put a face on, mm -hmm. um, you know, which should be a cheerful face and a pleasing which face. Which is itself stressful, I which, would imagine. Yes, right? exactly. If you're you're not feeling it but you're right you're right the the psychological dimension is important and that too can have direct costs for health care yes. you know seeking treatment for depression anxiety and also the comorbidity because this this is when you have a co-occurrence of more than one illness so the comorbidity has been recognized across physical illnesses and psychological illnesses. So for some diagnosis, if you think of a diagnosis with a chronic illness, so say for example heart disease as a result of prolonged and repeated stressors, not well managed, um, poor social support, poor exercise, you know, all of those, a person could be at risk for heart disease. Mm -hmm. So 
when when that diagnosis is delivered then folks usually don't res respond positively to that we don't run out and say oh yeah i have heart disease <laughs> you know so it could be possible that the news itself plus the adjustments that persons have to make and maybe even the treatment regimen that is required if it's serious enough yes. could have psychological consequences which could lead to depression anxiety and so on so there you have that comorbidity where it gets really complex okay so my last question would be what can the hr practitioner do to alleviate the effects of stress in the workplace right well there are a number of responses that we encourage um most of them of course you'd expect it to be proactive mm -hmm. so what we we recommend is to do an assessment of the workplace so that the, the effort is there all the time to have a, a stress-free or a stress-reduced environment. So yes, you want the competitiveness, you want the drive, you want the energy of a high productive workplace, mm -hmm. but we um, HR practitioners need to um, think about and invest in the professional and other resources that would lead to stress reduction in the workplace. So okay. avoiding it, so prevention is very important. So um, modern companies, for example, include play, uh, an opportunity to exercise. Yes, I and have seen that at Guardian Life. Yes. Yeah, Jamaican company, Guardian Life. Right. I know they have their own sports club. NC has a sports yes. club, Guardian Life has a gym. Yes, yes. And, and what I tell um, persons is that it's, it's important to invest in a facility, but it, this is the Caribbean, so it's not necessary to build a gym. You can if you want to, but encourage a walking group. True. Yes. yes. Um, it's here at the university. There are yes. lots of people on Ring Road. Exactly. Yes. And um, co uh, companies like Scotia, they have an active netball team. Yes. So people get together and practice after work and they compete in a league. Yes. yes. So, so, right. so yes. getting together around sports mm -hmm. and outdoor interests. Take a hike to the Blue Mountain. You know, get in the habit of going to the beach early in the morning for a quick swim or a run along the sand. I mean, yes. this is why we're in the Caribbean. Yeah. So we don't need to say we cannot exercise to relieve stress and also to just improve our cardiovascular well-being because we can't afford a gym. Yeah. So that's an example of one of one of the, the things. Then um, we also want to encourage workplace wellness in general. Yeah. So take a look at what's available in the cafeteria. So are the healthy choices available? Are meals available? Because sometimes people cannot get access to a meal and so they'll eat something like a quick unhealthy snack at their desk or they'll go without food for too long yes. which also is not good for the balance of psychological and physical well-being okay. so workplace wellness um encouraging persons to come in um practitioners and consultants to come in to address things like conflict resolution so health psychology the reason i like health psychology is because um my training my basic training in psychology is in social and personality psychology and i pursued also a concentration in health psychology and later epidemiology so i bring all of those together to look at life in the workplace yes. and so when we think of the different factors that can contribute to stress and the way we can use that knowledge to ameliorate stress and prevent it in the workplace then you can think of even a simple um concept like diversity in the workplace yes, yes. you know who i am who my co-workers are and how it's important for the hr man, um, manager to appreciate how the differences that contribute to an amazing workplace can on the flip side also contribute to conflict yes so yes, right yes. so it's important yes. to, to to manage that who do we have think about that when we're we're assembling our work teams um, find ways to to maximize person's sense of self in a positive way you know if we think about the international environment factors like race and ethnicity um, social class are important and talked about out there in Jamaica we have the same dynamics we have rural urban differences we have of course gender differences yes. male and female and age, age differences yes. 
in the in the in the corporate area we have the uptown downtown mm -hmm. right and so you know which school did you go to yes. so all of those dynamics are to be encouraged in a healthy workplace we want diversity but we want to understand how these differences and this social positioning can sometimes lead to, to interpersonal conflict and we want to enable um, employees to have the tools to, to minimize those conflicts, to use our differences in a positive way, and to, to, to manage conflict when it does occur. So okay, yes, because actually the whole mm -hmm. issue of conflict, I think yes. anger in right. the in Jamaica, yes. I can't speak for the rest of the Caribbean, right. but anger is certainly something that I think we have to deal with. Right. So yeah. I, I don't know, that would be another conversation yes, another it's day. Another but conversation. I think that that is, that yeah. is certain triggers. Some, yes. Because every culture will have certain repetitive triggers, yes. right? And so I'm I'm not sure if I would say that we're more angry than others, but perhaps we haven't been socialized to deal with our negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So so that would be something that yes, an HR practitioner would be smart to, to focus on. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you. Thanks.